Welcome back to another edition of the Pro Football Hall of Fame's Before the Snap series. As you can tell, I am not in Canton, Ohio at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm out on the road traveling for uh, another program that we do called Heart of a Hall of Famer, connected by Extreme Network. So a little bit of different backdrop today. And just so you all know, this this episode is pre-recorded. This is actually um, Thursday uh, on the calendar, and uh, this program is now live uh, today on Friday. So just so you know, for those watching who are tuned in today, this is pre-recorded, but you do have the opportunity to reach out to our special guest today uh, via LinkedIn. So if you want to learn and you want to know and you want to have questions that you're going to ask, go ahead and reach out to our special guest on LinkedIn today. If you haven't turned in or tuned into this program before, uh, what is Before the Snap? Well, it's a program that's going to showcase all the careers in and around the NFL and all the cool details that go into what somebody does with a career in sports, specifically uh, in the NFL. And we're going to learn about a real interesting one today. If you tuned in with us before, again, thank you so much. Uh, couldn't be happier that you're here for another program. Uh, before we do get started, though, some thank yous I'd like to pass out. First and foremost, I want to thank uh, all the educators uh, that allowed us to be a part of their program, part of their school, their learning today. Uh, we just appreciate you allowing us to be a small part of that. Secondly, I'd like to thank our students. You know, students, this is the opportunity for you to now reach out on LinkedIn, reach out and network and learn a little bit about what it takes to have a career in and around the NFL. As always, my name is Jake Ray. I'm a youth and education manager at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and I'll kind of be going through asking all the questions today. Uh, our mission at the Pro Football Hall of Fame is to honor the greatest of the game, to preserve its history, to promote its values, and to celebrate excellence together. And the values we promote are those of commitment, integrity, courage, respect, and honesty, all of which made our Hall of Famers great football players, but it made them great members of their community, great men as well, and truly can make you a great student and eventually a, gr a great employee of any organization that you end up in. So without further ado, uh, today we are lucky to be joined by Jacques McClendon. Uh, he's entering his seventh season with the Los Angeles Rams and serves as director of football affairs. He's a key liaison between the football and business operations for the organization and has multiple touch points throughout the entire Rams team. His department is also tasked with leading and aligning player and alumni affairs and their integration with the overall organizational strategy. Assists the scouting department and is also involved in football staff talent recruitment efforts with a specific, specific focus on inclusion and diversity, lever leveraging his experience with the Rams scouting apprenticeship program as well as his advisory board role. He serves as the Rams liaison for the Nunn, Wooten, and Bill Walsh Fellowship Program, and also serves on the player benefits, Bill Walsh, DEI, and Ledges steering committees with the NFL League office. Prior to his time uh, with the Rams, he actually was a player in the NFL, spent seven years, which included time with the Colts, Jags, and Dolphins, and was a four-year letter winner down there at Rocky Top, the University of Tennessee. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Jacques to Before the Snap. Jacques, welcome to the program. Appreciate you having me. Look forward to the conversation. Awesome. Well, uh, first and foremost, we always like to start by kind of looking at what your life looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. So I understand, you know, things now are different than they'll be in a month and they're different than they'll be when the season rolls around. But, you know, kind of on average, what does your day-to-day -day life look like? You know what? I think, as you said, man, it's a, it's a hard to say it's a one size fits all. You know, I think it's more seasonally with me. Um, Obviously this time of year is draft. So, you know, a lot of the resources are dedicated to that. I'm actually um, out on the road a little bit um, in draft meetings uh, virtually and in person um, with our staff and talking about some of the things that we're going to do to reconstruct the team and, you know, make it to where, uh, you know, it's, it's where we want to go forward. Cause at the end of the day, it's, it's really one of the, the cooler parts of the year because, you know, our GM head coach, president, uh, VP of football administration are, you know, our key executives within construction, that thing, and just being a part of the conversation and, and, and uh, really hearing how we, um, you know, just year by year have a new journey. Right. That's why I tell everybody this time is really the funnest time of the year. Right. Because it's, um, you know, unlike a, a lot of things that you do for, for a living, you know, sports is so uh, evolutionary, you know, each year is a new mountain to climb each year is a new task, new challenge, something you have to do to, um, continue to be able to evolve because you know the only constant in life is change and, uh, and that's that's definitely the the case within uh, the the NFL world so you know super exciting time of year and then you know seasonally that'll change but you know uh, at the end of the day I, I tell people it's hard to put it into words because uh 
you know, you just you just try to do the best of what you're given, and uh, that changes daily. So we'll kind of start with a little bit on some of the stuff you're handling today. And, you know, without diving into too many details, because I know there's stuff that you can't share, especially as we're leading in here right into the NFL draft. You know, what does you know, what does a pre- preparation for that look like when you go on the road and you're meeting with some of these athletes? You know, what are some of the things you're doing? Is it just meetings? Are there on field things? What are some of the things you're looking for in your current role when these meetings occur? Um, you know, at the end of the day, man, we have an unbelievable uh, scouting group. Our, our coaches look at the tape. So, you know, um, obviously there is a little tactical to it, but it's more just co- culturally. Do, do these individuals fit within the culture that our GM, head coach, president, VP of, of football administration put forward to, uh, you know, continue to have that sustainability that we'd want to have with this franchise? You know, uh, um, there was an article that came out yesterday and, um, you know, one of the key um, thought processes for this year is discipline within our exec team. And that's permeating to through people, you know, like me who, uh, who, who serve under it. And I think that, you know, that's, it's what we have in terms of a scouting process is very disciplined, very thorough, um, you know, very integrated and collaborative. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's not a stone left unturned. There's not a collaboration point left unhad. And, you know, that's why it's I, such a joy working for Les Snead because, you know, he gives everybody an opportunity to be involved with it. Um, and so when you have that, you know, like we like to call it our building extreme ownership, throughout and that shared equity um it really uh provides an opportunity to to have a uh you know like less as a symbiotic way of doing business um because you know we all have to be involved we all have to figure out a way to uh, have some equity within the process so we have a truly symbiotic draft process where everybody has an opportunity um you know obviously you know he, he he makes the pick but um you know from an input standpoint you know there's a lot of a lot of touch points Awesome. And as we fast forward and look into the NFL season, how does your role change? What are some of the things you're handling? Is it, you know, day-to-day operations? What happens on a game day? What are some of the things uh, when it comes time for the season to be in that that you're handling on a day-to-day? Yeah, when it comes time for the season to start, uh, it turns into more of that liaison role. Um, you know, I get a unique opportunity within my uh, vertical to really uh, collaborate with every vertical within our entire organization on the football side and on the business side. Um, so with that, you know, there's going to be a a lot of Zoom meetings uh-huh, and, a, and a lot of meetings in general, just to make sure that, um, you know, football is aligned with business, business aligned with football under the direction of, uh, you know, what what our exec, what our top executives are wanting to do. But, you know, as an executive leadership team, you know, that tier below them, you know, we all have to work together. And I think that what we've created here with the Rams is, once again, just like Les's draft process, a very collaborative, um, you know, uh, ecosystem. And that ecosystem has to be, uh, communicated with thoroughly, you know, uh, you know, Sean always says where communication lacks negativity fills the void. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have a very communicative, um, ecosystem. And so, you know, for me, it really turns into a lot of meetings, um, with the, with the business side. Um, cause I do have that purview of, you know, being in with the, being in the, the hip of the GM, the head coach, um, you know, our, our VP of football admin and, and showing, um, the business side where and when they can't activate or giving them feedback on ideas that they have. And, uh, and also to the, to the extent of that, when they have something they need to get done, you know, I, I, I want to be that key um, ambassador for them to make sure that we can do it within what uh, works best for the football side as well. So, you know uh, you know, I think Kevin Dimov says it, uh, he says it all the time, right? Like, um, you know, we are, we, we're one organization uh, as we sit right now, uh, we're in a, um, uh two different sites because of the uh we don't have our permanent facility built yet so it does it does lead to you got to really be intentional because you don't have like we like to call those collab those collision collaboration touch points to where you're just running into everybody every day so to be very intentional and so you know as kevin always says and wants to make sure that uh you know that we're all reiterating like you know if you're a ram you're a ram so you know it's uh you know i'm I'm lucky to have one of those roles to make sure that um you know that's that stays the case and making sure that both sides have um um, a voice, but also that they're working symbiotically and collaboratively, collaboratively together just to drive the uh, entire organization forward. I think it's sports have such a cool relationship and exactly that pretty much what your role is. Uh, you know, we've we've talked to scouts and coaches and we've talked to people who work on the business side and graphics and, you know, marketing and sales. And my question always is now for those business people is how does the football you know, mantra and theme kind of bleed over to the business side. And if there's, you know, when we talk with, you know, a new coach comes in, how does he take his values and apply that to the entire organization? I think, you know, you're kind of right in the middle of that. So how cool is it to be a part to where you're taking, you know, what people know the organization, know the Rams for is the football team 
and then be able to take those principles and apply them to the business side and vice versa, taking those uh, business principles and relationships and letting the football side know, hey, here's what's working, here's what's not working. How is that relationship for you? And is it a challenge? And is it something you look forward to going to the office every day? It's definitely a challenge, but I would say a healthy challenge, right? Like when you have people like, let's go Kevin Dimoff, Tony Pastores, you know, two people who they live on both sides as well above me. And like, they're creating um, this environment to where everybody um, is, is aligned and everybody is trying to do what's best for the Rams in general. Like it's not what's best for football. It's not what's best for business. It's not what's best for one person. It's what's best for, best for the Rams. And like, you know, I can't speak on uh, other organizations behalf, but uh, from what I hear, you know, it's not like that everywhere. So I am blessed to have the opportunity to work at a place that's trying to create that symbiotic environment, right? Because that's truly how, you know, you move the business forward, not only from a perspective of making sure you're optimally, um, you know, driving revenue or doing things best financially, but also that you're driving a great culture. Um, Cause at the end of the day, the people that, um, that work within your organization and that sustainability of having, you know, not a lot of turnover and people wanting to come work at your, um, you know, specific organization is at the end of the day, what really drives that production, sustainability, optimal output within your org. So, you know, I think our leaders understand that, you know, you know, our, our best, uh, our best ambassadors, the Rams brand are the employees that work for it and the fans that, that come and fill the stadium and uh, along with our players and coaches who make sure that at the end of the day that, uh, you know, we have a great um, team that goes out there on Sundays, Thursdays, Mondays uh, in the pandemic, any day uh, and goes out there and perform. So, you know, I just think it truly is the intentionality of how the leadership is projecting um, what they want from the organization. And, you know, we have some, some great intentionality and strategy of how we, um, you know, uh, make sure that that's going in the same direction. Now, obviously, we've talked so far and we, you know, we've only been at this about 15 minutes. And, you know, it sounds like you have, you, you know, said in your bio so many different touch points in the organization, which probably leads to a, a very hectic schedule, you know, day in and day out, meeting after meeting after meeting. So can you talk a little bit about what are the pros of that, being able to have a touch point with so many different people within the organization? And on the, the flip side, what are some of the cons of that? You know, where, how, do, how do time management skills come into play and things along those lines? You know, I mean, obviously the pros of, of it is the, uh, let's call it the universal education. Um, you know, at least having a standing knowledge of every vertical and how they operate and, you know, having those relationships with a bunch of different people without the org, like, you know, it, it does provide um, an opportunity for you to learn and expand. You know, what I tell people like, um, you know, ex uh, exposure leads expansion, right? So having exposed, being exposed to so many different verticals leads to expansion of knowledge uh, just for the entirety of the org. But, you know, on the flip side, like, you know, it does provide, um, you know, a lot of uh, challenges, just making sure you're serving everybody because that, you know, um, there are times when what's good for one person is not good for the other person and like creating alignment is not easy. Um, and so you got to be able to work through some of that ambiguity and, you uh, you know, move, move forward that. So at the end of the day, man, it's, uh, it's fun. It's exciting. Uh, it's, it's very, um, you know, no days the same. So it's, uh, uh, it's, it's very, uh, uh, it's something that makes it fun every day to come into work, to understand that, you know, you, you probably climb a new hill, got a new challenge. Right. But, um, you know, it does have its challenges as well. Um, you know, looking back on your career, obviously you played in the league for seven years, uh, going between a few different teams, um, and I assume growing up being a player in the NFL kind of was always the goal for you. But, um, you know, once you started seeing the end of your career come along, was was working in football something you kind of wanted to do since you were a player uh, or even at your time at, at the U of T? Um, was that kind of the goal or was this something that, you know, later in your career you developed? You know, this is this is something I see that I want to do. No, I would say I was pretty, um, you know, uh, probably different than most. Like definitely, you know, the NFL was something that I wanted to do, dreamed about, but. You know, I never made it the only thing that I would be able to do. So for me, you know, I graduated in three years of my undergrad and then got my master's in sport management in my, in, in my fourth. And during that master's program, I really learned about what are the a lot of the opportunities that you could have uh, within the sports spectrum. So I volunteered with my athletic department, volunteered at different um, athletic events that we had within, um, you know, at at Tennessee, um, even, even intern while I was training for um, pro day. Um, in Atlanta um, with the business side of the place I was actually doing my training for. Um, so I think that you're always trying to find a way to build a resume, right? And I think that's one of the, it's, it's, it's something that's dynamic for an athlete because you're, you're asked to be this, this uh, prime performer on game day, but yet you got to be ready to transition quick. So you have to be very intentional about one, picking out 
uh, you know, we always say rule number one is, is know thyself. So figuring out what your best skill set strengths are uh, and, and also your weaknesses so you can work to make them your strengths. And so for, for me, you know, I was always on this constant journey to say, hey, you know, I don't know when this thing will be done, but, you know, I want to have a resume conducive and of indicative of somebody that's a, a hireable, uh, you know, employee for somebody out the gate. And so even when I played every offseason, I did an internship, you know, during the during the lockout, I interned at the NCAA national office for three months from nine to two and would train from like two to five, um, you know, for three, four months. Right. Because we didn't have a job. We were locked out of the facility. And so I didn't want to just fill my time with, you know, sitting at home watching the TV. It was, it was an opportunity to network, an opportunity to, you know, get a, get a working structure, opportunity to see what project management looked like, to see what col collaboration within uh, verticals looked like. You know, and then the next summer, I went and interned at the NFL League office and then the University of Maryland, um, did a bunch of professional development while, while I was in, in uh, the NFL as well. But, you know, hopefully, you know, when I decided it was over, when actually you never usually decide, the NFL tells you when it's over. So when I was, uh, the NFL told me it was over, and like, it was, okay, I've got this actual like job experience, um, transferable skills, um, the ability to to navigate through the electronics of uh, what it could, you know, how it could be an asset to a community and, and, and the network that's going to help you, you know, place you in the right place. So, you know, uh, once it was over, you know, there was three opportunities and one of those, two of those were job offers and, one was an opportunity just to come out here and interview with the Los Angeles Rams. And, um, you know, it was a, a very unique opportunity. Didn't really know anybody in the building, but came out here and interviewed. And, you know, I, I told myself after meeting with, you know, Les and Sean, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I'll get this job, but if offered to me, you know, it's definitely something that I'm going to take. Cause I feel like I really learned from those two individuals and everybody in that building, uh, how to become a, a you know, a, a good employee, but, but most importantly, be a, be a part of something bigger than yourself. Of someone was always reiterated through the whole interview process. You know, Sean's Sean's mantra has become the Rams mantra: of "We, not me." Right? Nobody's bigger than the team. Nobody's bigger than any objective. Like we're on this journey together. And like you know, you just really felt that it wasn't, um, you know, just a, a, a catchphrase. It was actually something that was being lived throughout the org. So it's something you want to be a part of. So you know, about a week later, I got a call. Was offered the job, and you know, had never lived west of the Mississippi River. Uh, so got on a plane, moved to California, became a Beverly Hillbilly, and uh, you know, seven years later, here here we are. That's awesome. Um, you know, we talk so much on this program about networking and, you know, for for students, it's going to conferences and getting to know professors and reaching out on LinkedIn. But for you, it was, you know, it was playing in the NFL. How did being an athlete, a professional athlete, you know, how were you networking? Was it, you know, getting to know folks in the building who knew people? Was it doing all those things that you did during the off seasons? And like you said, when you were locked out? So, you know, when college students, especially, you know, student athletes, the the prime position that they're in with the the, you know, directory of alumni that have come through those colleges that they're at and have played the sport that they play. What would your your um, advice be to those student athletes who are in that role right now? How do they use the sport that they're playing and, and their experiences to network? My advice, <clears throat> my advice is always to start internally. Right. I think at the end of the day, especially when you're a student athlete, you have an internal athletic department that you can reach out to. So, you know, I can tell you as a professional athlete, like, you know, that's one thing that I did do. Like, you know, I had a great relationship with my general manager with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I told him like, hey, you know, I want to transition to the front office, uh, you know, once I'm done. And, you know, here's what I'm thinking. And, you know, he told me things I could work on, this, that, and the other. And like, he's definitely one of the people I called once I transitioned. Uh, when I played for the Miami Dolphins, I just cold emailed from my personal email, um, the president, Tom Garfinkel, told him, um, would love to go to lunch, would love to hear about your flow, would love to hear about your strategy. We're learning here how you got into the seat and just kind of, you know, figure out some working knowledge of what it takes to get in that president's seat. Um, we went to lunch and, and to this day, I could, um, you know, shoot shoot Tom, and sh Tom shot me a message. Um, I actually spoke at his kid's school virtually. And, uh, you know, he, he doubled back with me. We still keep in touch, right? Like, you know, those are the type of things that, you know, you, you want to, I always tell people you want to learn relationships before you need anything, right? Like at the end of the day, when you come to me and you want something and I don't really know you, it's hard to advocate on your behalf because there's no relationship. And because at the end of the day, you want to be, you know, I tell people it's the difference between being transactional uh, and, and transformational. Like you want transformational relationships, right? You want people that can transform your trajectory, transform, you know, your opportunity to procure opportunities, right? Now, you don't want to be just transactional. You go to ask somebody because at some point you don't have like uh, I tell people, um, you know, trust and, um, you know, rapport is is, is gained in, in, in drops and lost in buckets. So it takes a it takes a while and a lot of drops to fill out a bucket. 
but it's, it's real quick to empty that bucket. Correct. So, you know, I tell people to just be in that process of, of, of figuring out that trend, the transformational way of, of uh, you know, relationship building, because I truly feel that's the key. You know, not only can you you network and build that relationship and, and build that side of the, your job and, and your outlook on life, but there's, you know, the educational side of things too. You know, when you're done with school, you don't stop learning. You know, every day you're coming into the office, the classroom, the boardroom, whatever it might be, and can walk away learning something. You know, we read recently, you went back to, to Brown University and got your MBA. Was that, why was that something important to you? And, you know, was it beneficial for you to go get that, to have those, those three great letters, you know, at the end of your name now? Very beneficial for me, right? I think that um, it's something that I want to do in college, but because of the football schedule, um, you know, the business school at the time uh, would not allow me, they said I couldn't fulfill the, the time requirements. So, um, you know, it's something that I always wanted to do, something that I always wanted to have. It was a personal goal for me. Um, and, you know, one of the bigger reasons is that, you know, the, as you just said, man, life is about the constant journey of, of educating yourself. And sometimes it's books, sometimes it's reading, sometimes it's relationships and people you get to know. And sometimes, and, you know, more than not, I tell people it's learning from learning from failure, right? Like, no, no, nothing is a, a something that you should regret or is a failure as long as you're learning from it. Um, so, you know, being able to go back and get my MBA, it was an 18 month program, did it while I was, uh, you know, a full time worker, which uh, I probably really underestimated uh, how hard that would be. Uh, so, I, you know, finishing it definitely made it a little sweeter because I definitely underestimated uh, the bandwidth of what that would take. But, you know, there was there was a lot I learned. And, you know, one of the one of the coolest things I learned was, you know, just I get I get exposure to budget a lot, obviously. But, you know, getting exposure to balance sheets, right, getting exposure to the transactions that you know, make a, make a business uh, go go in the black or, or 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 be in the red, right? And I think that you know, just understanding the numbers numbers a little more uh, was was super important for me because I think that um, you know people talk about that they want to you know gain more, do more, get more responsibility, and I think you have to prove to people that you can handle it. Um, and you know, I, I'm at a place now to where um, you know you definitely want to continue to find ways to learn, grow. And, um, you know, procure more opportunity. But more importantly, I want to prove to people that I'm ready for it. I want to prove to people that I'm deserving of that. Uh, you know, nothing's going to be handed to you in the sports world. Um, you're going to have to work and earn everything. And so, you know, I want to work and earn for, um, you know, whatever opportunity may come and, and, and let people know that I'm, you know, a, a lifelong learner that is uh, always interested in becoming my best self. You know, outside of going back to school and getting an MBA or furthering your education, what are some other ways that students can and kind of learn. And was it, is it something, do you watch videos on YouTube? Is it Ted talks? Are you reading leadership books? What are some specific ways that every day you're trying to make yourself the best employee that you can be? Uh, I'm a big reader. Um, you know, uh, the book multipliers is, is, is what I'm reading right now. Unbelievable book. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell uh, outliers is up there for me as well. Uh, and just read John Thompson's um, autobiography, I Came as a Shadow, uh, I would I would thoroughly recommend that as well. But there's so much that you can learn from people that have been in the places that you that you want to go. Um, and a book can take you there. And so, you know, I always challenge people to figure out, you know, things they want to learn or people they want to study um, that may have that may have been in positions that they want to get to and, you know, read up on them and, you know, find a Find your, uh, you know, with, with the way the podcasts are, are, are at today, like I'm a big podcast guy, just throw a podcast in while you're, uh, you know, driving and, and there's so much you can learn in 40 minutes of, you know, how they uh, have so many ways that you can ingest information. So, you know, I definitely think, you know, it's podcast, um, you know, books, um, you know, um, whatever your favorite publications are, whether, you know, for me, I love, I love reading The Athletic, I love, love reading Sports Illustrated. Um, you know, some of those things that you can just keep you up on uh, sports business journals, a big one for me. I love I love reading them. I love reading about, uh, you know, how you can keep up with the common business practices and what's going on in different places. And so, um, you know, between that and, and networking with the right people, you know, I always tell people like when you network something, you should ask what their three favorite books are, um, you know, because that way that, you know, hey, you may not have something that you're looking for, but if somebody you're interested in be becoming or somebody that you've clicked with, and uh, you know, think that they have a um, you know a good a good way about them. You can learn about a lot about the uh, content by the content they ingest. There's growth to be had there. So you know, I always think it's good to ask people that you uh, that you network with or connect with. You know, what are some of their favorite books? You know, in in working in sports and you know being with an organization for so many years, roles change and titles change. So when you first started with the Rams as the director of player engagement, how has your role changed becoming the director of football affairs? Are you in the 
the same, you know, say we talked about verticals today. Are you in that same vertical with more responsibility? Is something completely separate or has the job changed so much over the past couple of years that it's it's a lot different than when you started? Yeah, I would say I came in came in, in a vertical and, and, and live more in an umbrella right now. And, you know, that umbrella has, you know, cross coverages where you get to see you have a bigger purview. Uh, and so, you know, you're sitting on the exec team where you want and you're, you're collaborating with a lot more verticals where you weren't. Um, you know, you get a lot more touch points with, um, you know, our top leadership where, where you didn't as much. And so, you know, those are just things that, you know, that, that help you grow. Because I tell people, you know, there's just so much about sometimes just sitting in a room and hearing what's going on. And once again, I'm so thankful for the transparency and the clarity and the opportunity that, you know, Kevin Demov, Tony Pastores, Les Sneed, Sean McVay, um, you know, you know, let me operate with. Because at the end of the day, I can go to any of their offices, ask a question, you know, I'm in on high level meetings and I may not have any equity in the decision, but just be it in there and seeing how they process things, because there are things that you cannot learn in books. Um, you know, there are things that you have to get on the job. And so, you know, I'm thankful for that exposure um, and, um, you know, dynamic leadership that I can get an opportunity to, to hear what's happening behind those closed doors. And so I don't take that for granted um, because it's not a, a lot of opportunities that a lot of organizations give you. And I think that, you know, that Kevin, you know, our, our lead executive here has created a uh, ecosystem and, and environment to where that's what he wants to create, you know, as transparent as he can be, uh, he's going to be. And that's even in a big executive team meeting that's big in a, an all staff meeting, you know, you know, whatever he can give, he wants people to feel like at the end of the day that, you know, when you become to be a Ram that, um, you know, you're being served optimally and you're being fed and you know, you've been onboarded and offboarded and, and, and included and collaborated with in such a way that that makes you want to stay. And even if you leave for a better opportunity, it makes you, uh, when you leave that that next person that uh, you know you may recommend for that job, you tell them how great place this place was to work. So you know I'm just very thankful for that because I know that it's just not the case where everybody's trying to create that ecosystem environment and climate. Now we've learned so far, you know, you you've put a lot of work into getting where you are today and taking all these classes, going back to school, networking, having all these different volunteer uh, opportunities. So you kind of had that idea of this is what I want to do, especially after your playing career was over. But there are those people in high school and even in college, and there might be young professionals out there that still don't really know exactly what they want to do. So for someone in that situation, a student, a young professional, somebody in high school, what would your advice be to them to try and find that niche that that they want to make their career? Time is on your side. Uh, the more you experiment while you have that, that slack in your life, the better. Because I tell people it's just important to know what you don't want to do just as much as what you do want to do. And so sometimes going through those early jobs, you figure out, man, there's no way I'd want to do X. There's no way I want to do Y. Or you start to find out, man, I like a quarter of what this is. You know, what's something that's similar that could bring these these uh, these two or three things that I do like that I could bring it to a, a full workflow, right? So experimentation is key. Uh, in between that experimentation, you learn about yourself. Because, you know, as I was talking about earlier, what, what I think is truly important is you go on your employee journey is um, figuring out, you know, what are your intrinsic skills and values that you're going to bring to a place that positions you to be able to go procure that opportunity and get into that interview and show people who you are. And so I think that you learn that along the way. I'm still learning that to this day. Uh, and, and I've been, you know, well, I guess I've been working out long, only seven years, um, you know, as a professional and then, you know, seven years as a player. But, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a lifelong journey. And I think that as, as long as you understand it, and the earlier you can start it, um, you know, just makes you more equipped to um, stay away. And because and, I tell people like you want to you want to get to a point to where you're taking um, the job, not just a job. And then it's not going to be the point early in your career, but that's what you want to get to. That should be your North Star is just, you know, moving in such a way and strategizing in such a way and authentically getting the relationships that helps you get the job. And the job may change. You know, it's it's a, sometimes it's a moving field goal post. But like as long as you're treating people the right way, as long as you're bringing your best self and bringing your best best to work every day, like it, it's it's going to happen for you. Because uh, you know, I tell people, you know, if, if you get a job, you work every day of your life. And once you find your career, you never work your day of your life. And now that's not all the way true. It's still a grind. It's still a lot of hard work. But you know, you're able to come in and, and work through the tough times because it's what you love to do. And so I tell people that's what's most important is like not everything you're not, not everything you do, you're going to like not every person you work with, you're going to like. But, you know, when you're when you align with your North Star, you know, you're able to navigate through the ambiguity and the hard times because you're, you're a part of something that you want to be a part of. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you've been involved in sports, both as a player and now as an employee with an organization. And, you know, from the side of working in sports, 
you know, there's some moments that you get to be a part of that not everybody gets to be a part of. It's the beauty of working in sports, that behind the scenes access and and life that you have on a day to day basis. So looking back on your career, we'll just look at your time uh, with the Rams here. What stands out to you is kind of that that moment when you retired, sitting in the lazy boy at home, talking to the grandkids about their your favorite moment. What sticks out to you as your favorite one so far? Man, I mean, this one's pretty easy. Uh, you know, uh, you know, winning the Super Bowl and, and you know, going along the journey with an organization, with a team, with a group of people, with a staff, a, a coaching staff, support staff, players, and having that goal and being able to see it through at the end is one of the most joyous things that I've, uh, you know, ever been a part of in my life uh, that's, that's non-family related. And uh, it was pretty cool because there was a lot of dedication with a lot of people that nobody know about to make sure that that came to fruition. Um, they obviously know the big moves that our, our, our lead executives made to, to construct that team and make it to where that we had a chance to shoot our shot at the end and, and, and make the shot and hoist the trophy. But they don't know about, you know, the operations team that we're still operating a little bit of a COVID environment and having to make sure that we moved in such a way that kept the team safe. They don't know about our athletic training staff that were training people you know, and, and making sure that they were healthy all the way up until game day to make sure that they go out and perform, but also be safe and, uh, you know, and healthy as well. They don't know about a strength staff that, you know, kept the team strong throughout the whole season and made sure that, um you know, they were able to operate. They don't know about the equipment team and making sure that everything they do to make sure the guys are safe and, uh and, and you know, so they can just keep going and going. So, like, there's just so much that goes into uh being in the team environment and making it work, right? And I think at the end of the day, um, it's, it's about being part of something bigger than yourself. So, you know, that's one. But, you know, I think one that uh, I definitely don't take for granted was I think it was my second year here and we had the fires um, and um, we actually had a game that was going to be had in Mexico. Um, the game gets canceled because um, uh, because of the, 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 the standard of the fields and the grass. And so we had to pivot the game back to L.A. We were training in Colorado and you know, our, 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 uh, our stadium staff, our whole entire team, whole entire organization had to really go put on a game in like 72 hours um, at the Coliseum. And it was us versus the Kansas City Chiefs. And it was an absolute shootout. And like the gravity of that moment, right? Like, because a lot of the crowd were first responders and people that were helping these families be safe and, uh, you know, making sure that everybody could uh, get away from the fires and, 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 the, and the air quality and the condition of everything we were going through. So like, you know, it was that huge LA moment that you see the power of, of football and community and, and what it can really do. Cause that game wasn't about, you know, the, the, the making money and the game wasn't about like the, uh, the gate. And it was about truly bringing some people together, bringing people together um, to give people a break from reality, but, but more importantly, celebrate the people that have done so much work to keep people safe. And, uh, you know, that was a very special game because you, you just really have an appreciation for all those first responders and everybody that came to that game. And, you know, just just seeing that flag go out before that game and really seeing what what America stood for and uh, and being in that moment with uh, with Los Angeles in the in the greater community was uh, was was very, very special. Very, very cool. Uh, a couple more questions here before we get wrapped up. Uh, and this one I definitely want to get to. Uh, because you do, like we've said before, have the unique ability to see the the league as a player and now as an employee. Um, you know, we're unapologetically football to Pro Football Hall of Fame, as you can assume. Uh, and we believe football can teach so many life lessons. And you saw that firsthand playing in the NFL. What were those life lessons you took away from the game of football that you now can apply to your day to day life as an employee within an NFL organization? You know what? You know, I love how you say you're about your strictly football. You know, it's pretty, basically been my life, too. So. Uh, pretty aligned with it. And what I would say is because of that, you know, to me, and, you know, obviously I'm biased, so I'll admit that before I say this, football is the ultimate team sport, right? Uh, like you can have the best quarterback in the world. If your offensive line can't block for him, uh, uh, you know, and hopefully one day her, um, you know, they, they will not be able to get anything done. So within that, because it's the ultimate team sport, there's these intrinsic traits that you gain and learn of, of how to one, do your job, right? Like at the end of the day, you know, it's 11 people on the field on your side of the ball, and each person has to do the job for the entire team to be successful. Um, and also, you have to have somewhat of a universal understanding of what everyone does. And also, you have to be able to work through hard times. You got to ride the highs. You got to make sure that everybody stays on pace from a leadership standpoint. So, like, football teaches you how to work within a team. And that is a life skill that you can take away that will carry over to your business life. And to me, you know, to keep going, that's with all the sports. Um, you know, sports teaches you whether it's dedication to training, 
you know, whether it's the opportunity to be coachable, whether it's the opportunity to, to live a healthy lifestyle by being active, right? There's so much transferable skill and lifelong lessons you can learn within the game. So at the end of the day, that's what I take up pride in being a former football player is, is being able to work within a team uh, and, and making sure within that team that you know your role and, and do and dominate it and do the best at it. You know, that's one thing Les Snead always says, dominate your role. As long as you dominate your role, the Rams will be as good as they can be. So, you know, I think that um, football teaches you that, you know, dominating your role within the bigger collective, you know, helps the bigger collective. Awesome. All right. Now we're going to, we're going to do uh, this section that we've done with uh, every program so far. It's our rapid fire question segment. Uh, and we got six questions here to ask for you. So rapid fire, first answer that comes to your mind. You ready to go? I guess uh, I better be. <laughs> All right. First question, LinkedIn, a great way to network or just another social media app? Great way to network. Number two, GPA on a resume, keep it on or leave it off? Uh, leave it off. But hey, if you got a four of, hey, more power to you. Social media accounts, public or private? Uh, public. If you got something to hide, everybody's going to question that. All right. Jeans at work all day, every day, never or only on casual Fridays? Bad question for Jacques because Jacques is a sweatpant guy at work <laughs> because, uh, you know, so maybe depending on your environment, um, you know, you might be khakis, you might be jeans, but I would tell you to read the room. All right. Number five, coin toss, heads or tails? Uh, heads all day. And then the final one, you score a touchdown, your go-to touchdown celebration. Ooh, that's a good one. Back back in the day, maybe the worm, um, <laughs> you know, but yeah, not quite as uh not quite as athletic as I used to be. So, you know, we we might just hit a a, a quick uh, gritty. I mean, we, we hit a nice little gritty. We'll do a gritty. awesome. The gritty has been a popular answer for for us this year for sure. Um uh, my last question here for you. And again, I can't thank you for giving time out of your busy schedule. Like you said, you know, you're on the road tomorrow for, for a long time, uh, getting ready for the draft. So we, we definitely appreciate you giving us some of your time here today. Um, talked about so many great things today, but if there's one item or one piece of information, that little nugget that you want students who watch this program to take away, what would that one piece of information be that you want people to, to leave with today? Seek mentorship. Um, life perspective and people that have lived have such a unique angle to teach you not only to learn from what they learn, but also not to make the same mistakes they, they're, they're going to have. You know, as you continue to network, find that mentor. You may connect with 10 people. You may only like one. It only takes one person to mentor you and give you some perspective on life to be able to help you grow. So please seek mentorship. Awesome. And with that, we're going to wrap up this installment of the Pro Football Hall of Fame's Before the Snap series today, featuring Jacques McClendon, the director of football affairs for the Los Angeles Rams. Again, Jacques, thank you so much for being part of the program today. Uh, greatly appreciate you coming on. Uh, and we know we tell this to all of our Hall of Famers, but I think it goes to everybody working in the league as well. You know, thank you for everything you've done for the game of football uh, and that you will continue to do uh, down the road and truly everything indirectly that you've done for us at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Whatever the complete opposite of a Hall of Famer was is what my career was, but I appreciate that comment. And at the end of the day, because of football, I've been afforded so much opportunity. I look forward to uh, you know working with you all and seeing whatever that is next. Uh, awesome. Um, and as always, as we always say, make sure you're subscribing to everything at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Follow, like, subscribe, all of our social media channels to see all the great uh, interviews and contents we have coming out. And we mentioned earlier, if you're a podcast listener, we've got one at the Pro Football Hall of Fame called The Mission, hosted by our great friend and co-worker, Jameer Howerton. Uh, he's interviewing some of our current class, the class of 2023, a little behind the scenes action. So make sure you subscribe and listen to all those great interviews. For our series here, Before the Snap, we'll be back on April 7th. We're going to be speaking with Taylor Gardner of the Minnesota Vikings, who works in their communications department to learn all things communications uh, with the Minnesota Vikings. So again, Jacques, thank you so much for being part of the program day. All of our students who tuned in, we're sorry we couldn't be live today, but we hope you take this opportunity to reach out, network, and ask your questions directly to Jacques as he said he'll be willing to, to get on his LinkedIn and do that as well. So again, for myself, everybody at the Pro Football Hall of Fame and Jacques, Mr. McClendon, uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. We hope to see you next week. Appreciate you having me. Look forward to connecting with whoever reaches out. Sounds great. Thank you to everybody.